We're back, baby. It's the charity show. I pitch free throws because they are free. Joshua Fisher, DJ Nikki Snacks, Crowder, Alex, Toss Me the Rock, Disopolis, and Star Everett Osborne of Sweetwater. Welcome to the show. It's the Nat Clifton story. It's an unbelievable story. Um, and we might as well just get right into the nitty gritty, right into the meat of it. What was your biggest discovery once delving into this character? Well, first of all, I think the biggest discovery before diving in was that I didn't know who this character was. Mm. Coming from a sports background, not knowing who the first African American was to sign an NBA contract, how did I know about this? And, but so happy to know that I know about it now. You know what I'm saying? So that was probably the first thing for me. Like, wow, I didn't even think to know about this guy. I think because we got so many legends and people to appreciate, we never thought about the point of reference. So for me, that was the first thing that really took me off the edge. And then once learning about him, it's like, dang, like all the things that he had to go through. And the beautiful thing about Sweetwater's story is, yeah, yeah, it was very monumental for a diaspora of people. But his story reaches the masses because Sweetwater's story changed the way the game of basketball was played forever. You know what I'm saying? He brought like an innovation, a style of flair, creativity that was never in the NBA. So I think learning about that was the biggest thing for me was how impactful this one person's journey was to something that we all appreciate and love and had no idea about. Because to be honest, man, the NBA didn't have fans like that. The Harlem Globetrotters were the mecca of basketball, which is where Sweetwater played. And they would play their games, pack out arenas. Then the NBA would come in right after to keep these people's fans just to kind of not bite off the Harlem Globetrotters, but ride their wave a little bit because their, their their style of play was way more fun, more entertaining. The NBA was very rigid, less creative, you know, really boxed in style of play. So Sweetwater broke the mold, which opened up the playing field for everybody. I mean, all the greats that we appreciate today. So that was the biggest thing for me. Yeah, it's, it's wild that people don't realize, even heading into the 70s of basketball, like they would just like black games out or like throw commercials in the middle of games, like, or they would end games early. It was not the phenomenon that it is today. I mean, we're, we're wearing these guys' shoes, you know, what's like we're watching their outfits as they come in. We're stylizing off of that. These guys are, you know, these athletes are the first, some of the first billionaire athletes. They're, they're making crazy money and they're being crazy successful. And they're they, what they become to what Sweetwater started. And, it's it's and how maybe like not right away, but how quick really things turn from him on his impact. And the, I love how you talk about the impact of the game. How what was training like for you? Because I, you know, we stalked your Instagram a little bit. Not to toot your <laughs> horn, you know, you're you're in pretty decent shape. Like again, I'm sure. Like yes, you're not playing a full basketball game, but it is physically taxing filming something like that. Nah, to be honest, I mean, shout out Martin and Gigi. You know, the the writer and director of this film, he's been working on this for 28 years, right? So he's done a lot of research that was, I mean, yellow pages without Google, right? Going to the NBA actual vaults in New York, getting information. I say all that to say, because that shows you how authentic this story is. And not just from a written perspective, but even a performance perspective. So even on the court, I know you said we wasn't playing full games, but we really were. So mm. it, was, it was a moment where... Literally, they would just track us actually playing full court, just real live motion. I mean, I can, I can, I, mean, I can confirm that because ever you, you might not have known this. We just hopped on. You're hopping on a, a Zoom with three dudes. I was playing on the Olympians team across from you. <laughs> you know what's crazy? I'm like, I'm looking. I'm like, yo, why does he look a little familiar? But I just didn't say nothing. But I'm like, you know, I've seen you through social, so maybe that's what it was. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, so you can attest to that, right? There's moments where we're literally playing full live. I mean, granted, for the filmmaker perspective, we do have to maybe cross right before we cross a certain line, take it slow just so the film could catch up. And then once we cross that line, it's game one, it's live action. So we had a, a specific setup, maybe certain plays like that. But after that, man, it was real live basketball going on there. So I think that's just a testament to authenticity. And just to answer your question as far as me, I, mean, I play professional basketball. I, uh, you know, just broke the scoring record in the celebrity all star game. Not to my own heart, hey. but the scoring record. <laughs> you know, so so I mean, my basketball has been there. But to be honest, yeah, I'm a supreme athlete in a way. But I didn't play basketball in 1930, 40, 50s. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was a test as the actor, right? Like, okay, I can't bring Everett's world over to Sweetwater's world because they're two different worlds. Yeah. I can't use basketball as a bait that I know this guy and I can play this guy just because I played basketball. You see what I'm saying? So I had to, before even embracing this role, 
I had to put aside Everett's world and absorb a whole new world completely. Even though it was something I truly loved and held on so tight, I had to let that go as well. My knowledge of basketball and really embrace this guy's world, man. And I mean, everything you see in the Chuck Taylors, I'm doing all dunks, all shots fully made by me. Uh, there's no, there was no double. So everything was really, truly a raw perspective and, uh, you know, approach to the filmmaker. I mean, because that's what we wanted to do. Just hang it on witness, truth. Witness right here. It was all yeah. Everett. He was doing it. I mean, it's yeah. all, it, was, it was all that. But I mean, all that was just so we can keep it true. You know, like, let's let's keep this real. Sweetwater has to do this. Let's do it. You know, sure. and, and that's 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 an approach we took from the from the beginning to the end of this film. So talk to us a little bit about how the audition process worked, because you got to be able to ball. You also got to be able to act. I mean, what was it like? How, what did they put you through in terms of getting you ready for this role? Yeah, it's like a two-headed monster, man. It was like I always knew certain things, but it was never able to really prepare it. So uh, the things they had to put me through, man, was just a regular acting process. You know, you get home, you got an audition, you print it out, sit at home, you look at the sides, put it on tape, send it back. So that's really what it was for me. But they also wanted to see the basketball side. So I had an opportunity, a unique opportunity, to truly lean in as the artist and then as the athlete at high level on both sides. So I, I submitted my tape. I had one scene to do. I submitted that. And I knew because it was only one scene, I was like, okay, they know what they're looking for. Like they're not asking for three scenes, two scenes. This is one important scene. And thematically, it's a turning point of the film. And I knew that. So I knew that when I submitted this audition, I had to present them the full character. I couldn't bring in, oh, this is what I'm thinking. I had to just inform them of who Sweetwater was. This is what it is. I had to send them basketball video. So I had my uncle called him up. We went to the gym. He recorded me in Chuck Taylors. I got my own Chucks doing dunks, shots. I study how Sweetwater played. So even in the mm. film, the basketball film, I played like Sweetwater on my audition. And on the acting, I made different choices physicality-wise, not from the athlete, but as the actor, whether it be voice, whether it be body. I made certain physical choices uh, that, that just informed them. You know, so I pretty much had two days to sink into a character, create a character, go to Google, research this guy, figure out who he was, shut out my whole world and just zone into a portal. And, you know, the directors and the producers said, hey, you know, they called me back for um, was it the call back at Warner Brothers. I did it in person and they booked me the same day. I think wow. that's that's a thing that a lot of people don't understand is. You you, you you hear about <laughs> you hear about the lead of of a show or a movie where they embody a character and oh you know they get the prep time to create the character for, yeah. for you know if they're if they're playing Sweetwater it's like oh I got three months training with X whoever the whatever X basketball player it was to teach me how to move how to shoot how to you know do that sky hook right. put it between my legs whatever it is but they don't talk about the audition that gets you the initial part, right? And that is having to build that world in two days. So that's really, really impressive. How were you able to then continue to grow and build the character when you were like living in the character on set? And, and did you, because I imagine some of that research was just, was it just YouTube? Like you were just looking up, like where, where did that come from, that research? Yeah, I mean, great. You hit a lot of great points, man. Uh, but the research came to Google, Right, YouTube, I found some black and white footages of, of Sweetwater playing and operating on the court, right? Like, not just playing, but... So I took, like, DNA DNA samples, I would say, right? So maybe I cut something up in four seconds of him moving on the court, and I'll just hone in on those samples for four seconds. Uh, and then I would, you know, I found a video of him as an older man driving a taxi cab, talking about his life. So from a psychoanalyst perspective, understanding where his brain was at during that time. Mm -hmm. And then certain mannerisms, I can't take it because he's older, right? So it's like there's the creative liberation through that source of how could he have been or where did these motions come from? or You know, so many different things I can go all in about, right? But pretty much to answer your question, just find as many videos, any source material. Uh, I found a lot of different articles, connecting dots. I mean, just really fully researching, being maniacal about the process just to, you know, serve this this real human being, man. I mean, because it wasn't about me. I'm like, you know what? This is a real story. I've never heard about it. This man really lived. I mean, he fought in the war. You know what I'm saying? That's he crazy. dropped 60 yeah. points in high school and couldn't even go play college because he went to go serve a country. Then he comes back after serving this country to now face racial discrimination, the segregation, and it's like still didn't, you know, still carry grace 
and his spirit yeah. still had love in his heart and still moved with such eloquence. So how do you do that? You know, still worried about the other and fought for justice for everybody, equity for everyone. How do you still maintain that during this time? So I was like, you know what? I got to do as much as I can to fully inform myself to provide the audience with the best experience. And like I said, I got great filmmakers, man. 28 years of research, Richard Dreyfuss, Kevin Pollack, Jeremy Piven. Badass. You know, we got so many great guys yeah. right, to keep this thing true and real and fun to keep it high level. So I was supported across the board with it. Did you have access at all to anyone in Sweetwater's family or, or people that knew him back in the day? Yeah, you know, thankfully, Martin had a lot of access uh, to the family and the people that I knew him. So a lot of stuff in the script, like I said, it was pretty much informed really well. But me personally... I think one of the biggest joys while filming, though. So I was already in motion of filming, right? So I'm already in the character world. I've already, we've already built this guy out and still discovering him as we go. Suwater's daughter, Jatan Robinson, shows up on set maybe a week or two in the filming. And that was like, you know, if I care about any, I don't really care as an artist. I don't really care about what other people think. You know, once I'm in that world, I'm in. It is what it is. You know, it's outside of the director and us working together to create whatever we want to get to our audience. But if I cared about anybody's thoughts, it would be his daughter or anybody yeah. in his family because that's who this is for. That's what this is about. Then the audience second. So um, I was just kind of like, you know, it is what it is. But she told me and I saw her, I gave her a hug and she was like, wow, you know, like you have my dad's spirit. You know, my dad would have said that. Or, you know, so I was able to just hear certain things from her that were mind blowing that I had to even take a, a step away. I had to walk out Warner Brothers for a little bit and just breathe like, wow, it was a lot to take in. But it was beautiful to see that she was there. She embraced it. She was in alignment with what we were doing. She's still involved. Um, so the NBA is involved as well. So, I mean, we're, we've hit this on all sides, man, keeping the story true and connected to the real source. That's incredible. I think just yeah. to add a little context for anyone that's listening or watching this, like the – the 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 week that I was there on set, I was playing for a team called the Olympians, Indianapolis. That's one of the early NBA teams. And Sweetwater Nat is playing on the Knicks, right? And the, and he has joined the Knicks after playing for the Globetrotters. The guys, the the Olympians don't exist anymore, but they were started by guys that graduated from Kentucky. Adolph Rupp, who was like the legendary Kentucky coach, they graduated and then they start their own team. Meanwhile, and this is I, everyone on that team is white, just as a just as a heads up. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sweetwater is like not even sure whether or not he can play in the NBA and has to go through all these different roadblocks to even play for the Knicks. So if that just like paints a picture of the time and it's not even a comparison, like he's so much better than them and he brings so much love and passion to the game. He's almost like. Steph Curry, you know, to a lot of kids now where the way that he plays the game has completely changed how little, you know, 12-year-olds, 5-year-olds, 7-year-olds. I remember Martin's son was like, he was wearing a Steph Curry shirt every single day on set. Like, that's just how yeah. impactful Steph Curry is. And I think that, like, the best comparison I can come up with is, is that's what Sweetwater was for the NBA and in the initial, like, starting of the NBA. But even so much more, and that's why I bring up the Olympians because, like, they were like, oh, yeah, we want to start a team. No big deal. And they do it. And this guy, mm -hmm. like, is trying to just get into the NBA and play the sport that he loves. But, but they're serving the army. Yeah, yeah, but it's just like it's it's I think it's a I think that's I, I want to ask you, Everett, like the, the racial element, like how important was that to you in telling the story now? Right. Like why now? That's what everybody always asks about, like why movies are coming out. And, and for you, obviously, playing the character, Martin, I'm sure has his other um reasons why he wanted to tell the story now even though he's been trying to tell it for you know 28 years like you said but yeah i'd love to just get your your thoughts on that side the human element and and the racial components behind this story and behind sweetwater yeah like martin would say you know it's all about time right so i think as i was hearing you talk i heard the word betrayal you know and you know humans especially people that fight for a country that's not really fully keeping them in the know about certain things or maybe not fully being 100% transparent or representing them 100% the best way possible can feel betrayal. And I think even taking that from another level, all human beings can sense that as well. Uh, feeling a sense of, you know, putting your best foot forward at something and not getting everything that you wish to in return or sharing love with someone and not receiving it fully back or putting your all into something and feeling like you got cut short and it's like, what do we do about that? Are, are we bitter? 
You know, are we do we fight? Do we war? Uh, do we protest? Yeah, we protested. You know, we've we've done that. You've seen certain movements happen where protests have happened. And, you know, it's so crazy to think we have been removed from certain circumstances, but then we're kind of not because you see a lot of different elements still going on. So I think the human condition is 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 always something worth to be talked about and, and, and looked at. And I think that there are a lot of consistent elements, even to this day, that was going on back then. But I do think we are in a way better place. But what I can say is, you know, James Bald Baldwin talked about, you know, history isn't in the past, you know, and, and, and so it, history is now. And being informed about history is very important because we always carry history with us. And if, if some people perish for not for lack of knowledge. So if you don't know about something or know about your history, then you can be subjugated to any thing that's coming up in the future, right? That could put you in a bad position. So I think just for humans perspective, having awareness of history and like, oh, it's something in the past. No, you have to know what that's going what's going on right now because it will repeat itself if right. we don't understand. And then beyond that, if we don't come together, what's beautiful about Sweetwater's journey was we just said that, right? One man's story changed a game. Right. And that's that's the universal aspect of this Sweetwater story. It's like one person can go through something, but we all are affected by it. Now, we can all be affected for the worse or we can come together and create something stronger, better, better change. And it challenges infrastructures that's in, that's in place to this day. Like, yeah, these are infrastructures that we went by and rules that we went by. But is it really truly serving us now today? And I think that this will provide that opportunity for everybody to kind of look at like, you know what? I've operated in my life this way. I've set these standards for my life this way. But why? Can I challenge that? And challenging is, you know, challenging rules can be disruptive, even in your own personal life. But understanding that as human beings, we have an innate creativity and imagination that no other species has to where we can go beyond boundaries that are in front of us, right? Now, when we do that together, change can be I mean, infinite. You never know what we can do as a human species together, which is what I think this film is about, you know, and it brings all these, you know, struggles and trials that we go through individually as the black man goes through individually, but then the white man can understand and then the girl and the guy, I mean, so many different people in diaspora, people can relate to just struggle because we all are struggling with something or have struggled with something and we all want to overcome it and understanding how to overcome that together, I think really highlights the beautiful aspect of the Sweetwater story. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, basketball is a game, right? Yeah. But it, it's so much more than that in so many yeah. in so many ways. And I think, like, without – this is just a thought that occurred to me. Like, without trivializing anything, I'm just I'm – sum, I'm summarizing it quite quickly. So I don't, I don't want to – like, I'm just putting that out there because I don't want that to say that I'm trivializing it. Like, if Sweetwater doesn't get into the NBA – How long does it take? How long does it take? But also, like – it is just a game, but it's also a game that now has affected lives. So many different lives. Like you look at the guys now and what they make, that's sure. generational wealth for yeah. like future generations of their own family. Like yeah. that's it's wild. Some of these guys are with the new CBA that just got passed. They're going to make 50 million, 60 million and get a max contract. Like and, guy, and guys that don't get that though. I mean, you just mentioned that you saw someone's kid on set wearing a jersey. What does that even do to that kid? That's some type of inspiration, which is one of the highest human acts, right? So even right. if you don't touch that billion dollar, this is the inspiration from a human being that that was allowed through their creativity and their ability to play at the highest level, like Steph Curry, can touch a kid from a total different diaspora as him. Is, yeah. That's that's worth way more than any billions of dollars, honestly. Yeah, right too. Like I mean, I was at I was at a dinner on Friday, and I was sitting. I was sat next to a friend's boyfriend. I've never met the guy, but basketball is just a great equalizer. Like he's like, "Oh, you cover this?" I'm like, "Yeah." He goes, "All right, what's your thoughts on this?" I'm I'm good for the rest of the dinner. You know, I don't have to get into like, oh, like yeah, like what about the stocks and like what are you doing? Like 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 mon not monotonous, like boring conversation. We could just sit there and talk about realistically how far the Lakers can go for about an hour, you know, and it's such a great equalizer and it's transcendent to the players in the court. And it gives people, you know, it gives people hope too. Like it's a very hopeful sport and yeah. it's a very, the best part about the NBA, which is why it has become so successful, which guys like magic and bird took it to another level. And then Mike, and then now Steph, fortunately for like, unlike the NFL, there's no face mask. You get the full FaceTime of the players and it's a little bit more exclusive. There's 15 guys on a team. And they do 
for better or for worse, it's like always a star driven league. So you really connect with these guys and these athletes and these players and having a guy like Nat Sweetwater Clifton, you know, who now people connect with. And it's important. The story is told Jack Robinson, obviously is, you know, the ultimate, like, you know, but this guy's not that far behind not to compare the two, but he's, he deserves to be mentioned almost as similar in the same breath as Jack. No, no, no. Uh, The same breath for sure. I I would say the same breath. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think, not to compare because it's two different worlds. MLB was way more established during that time. So Jackie Robinson, what he was able to do was was groundbreaking for the world, for Black people as a culture, as a community, period. So that's that over there. But Sweetwater is not to compare it like we're talking about, right? But it was his impact was major as well at the at the same degree. I mean, we're still talking about these players, Magic Johnson. That you, I mean, you just mentioned the names. I mean, even Michael Jordan said there's no Michael Jordan without Sweetwater. So we're mentioning names who stem from the Sweetwater tree. So it's not about him being before or behind. It's just about, you know, understanding trailblazers, giving people their right due diligence and their value that they really brought to our society and our community, and just honoring that. And I think he he deserved his true full due diligence. And hopefully this film is a peek into everything he's done and could, you know, at least open people's eyes up a little bit. Has there been any NBA players that have reached out to you at all um, just in support in the movie? I mean, I know that it hasn't necessarily aired yet, but in, they're in the midst of the season still and playoffs are starting, but has anyone reached out? Yeah, you know, uh, Bobby Portis. Shout out to him. Yeah. Sixth man of the year. Um, <laughs> he's uh, he's in the film. You know, he's portraying Earl Lloyd, and, you know, we just chopped it up last week and had a great talk. So the support, to have true support from Astro guys in the league, it's wild, man, because we're talking about where the game is at now. So to have the thread from where the game is at now to where it was, even sewn into the film, it's crazy. So I had guys like that, guys I personally know in the league, Norman Powell, Spencer Dinwiddie, tapped in, reached out a little bit. So there's been love from the people in the league. And, you know, spending time in All-Star Weekend and having that beautiful time that we were talking about, it was great to be there must guys in the league and see d shake it up with LeBron again because me and LeBron has done stuff in the past. So – you know, seeing guys like that, that that see this, that see what's going on and respect and honor, and even legends, Reggie Miller, you know, Kenny Smith, these guys like that, James Worthy. I mean, these are guys from all mm. types of, you know, diaspora of the league that's reaching out, that's tapping in and appreciating what's going on. Yeah, we may not be as familiar with the story, but I bet you James Worthy is. Yeah. He's a player, he's an 80s, one of the best, most underrated 80s players, 90s players of all time. And I bet you he's tapped very tapped in and very like you said, Michael Jordan said there'd be no MJ, you know, without Sweetwater, there'd also be no James Worthy. So I'm sure he's really cognizant of something like this. We mentioned yeah. there's a lot of cool guys in the set, a lot of, you know, big name actors. What are some of your takeaways from working with guys like Piven, Richard Dreyfus, Gary Ules? Gary, yeah, I mean, we love we're big Princess Bride guys, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then he's uh, the man. He's the man. Yeah. And he's just Gary. the most positive light, I feel like. I, on set right like literally he, was incredible. I mean, he sent me a beautiful text this morning i mean he i mean he's just that guy you know he's so uh a beautiful human being human being but everyone was i mean it's crazy you mentioned all these legends uh and i think about this all the time I'm like wow these guys really showed up you know how they say play every game like it's your last right these guys really do that they play like it's their first and their last like when i say that they're open to change they're open to learning but then they put it all on the line with a certain level of confidence and knowing that's bar none, you know? So to have that support, it was crazy. And I would ask each and every one of them, Kevin Pollock, I'll sit down next to him. Hey, mm-hmm. you know, what's some takeaways you learned? What would you tell your 29 year old self, your 30 year old self? What would you tell them? I mean, I asked all these guys that question because <laughs> I just want to learn. I'm a freak like that. I just want to ask questions. And they all literally said the same thing at different times. They all I spoke to them one by one and they all mentioned being present and the power of being present and the power of learning Every day you're on the job, whether you learn something from the crafties, whether you learn something from production, whether you learn something in filming, like just always keeping that mind open to learn and to be present in this moment right here. And it's so human. I mean, because what we do is a human thing. Right. And to hear that from these guys who can be on the top of a mountain, but to still be grounded was beautiful. Richard Dreyfuss was lovely and always thinking about ways to make the takes better. I mean, they brought their best to this film. It wasn't even like, OK, yeah, they did the thing, made a check. No, no, no. They brought it, and each and every one of them said they brought it to on different occasions. So, so going forward for you, I mean, I, yeah. I know you've you did a, a guest star on Chicago Fire. You did a guest star on on Sisters. Yeah. Is is 
telling stories about basketball something that you want to incorporate in your future as a storyteller and as an actor? Because I look at just the scene of of what's popped up lately, like the Kevin Durant produced thing, right? You had Giannis's story. You have this. Hustle came out. Like, yeah. I feel like we're kind of winning tapping back. What? Yeah, winning time, right? Like, we're tapping back into um, – sports and specifically basketball. And again, I think Josh, a lot of it has to do with the fact that you can see the guys, right? Like there's that much more emphasis on putting those stories stories forward because you can interact with who the, the characters are that are in those stories. But is that something you want to be a part of kind of your, your resume, like your life resume as, as an actor and performer? I think it already is, you know, yeah. I think it already yeah, is. That's because we just, we just did the, the Sweetwater story. Uh, but for me personally, as Everett, you know, I got so many stories to tell, man. You know, and basketball has been like a conservatory for me, I could say. You know, it's been a beautiful seat where a lot of things have grown from. But my experiences extend beyond the basketball court. And, you know, my ability to storytell is extends beyond the, the basketball court, even the things you just mentioned before. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, diving in, telling new stories, more stories. But I appreciate and I love what's going on. I mean, because sports is universal. You know, the human experience of how people, fans will come in and experience sport. We feel so connected. It brings an emotional rise. I mean, it's kind of like the theater, which is dope that this film's releasing in theater because we get to experience that together, right? Yeah. And watching the, the high and rise of emotions and go through, through this human experience together, watching people going through their journey because we all are connected. I mean, it's a beautiful thing that sports and cinema actually can give you. So I'm just looking forward to staying in this moment you know, giving Sweetwater his due diligent focus and, you know, letting the chips fall they may, letting the chips fall wherever they may as far as whatever comes after. Mm, yeah, I mean, there's so many great basketball. I was just like, what other good basketball stories could be told? I mean, I mean the Mar Marbury one day will get like a great yeah. Marbury. <laughs> I mean, but, really, though, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, Marbury definitely deserves one. Like, for me, yeah, man, I'm just excited to, you know, I probably, I don't want to say I, I probably never will because uh, you never want to say never. But as far as basketball goes, I'm, you know, this was where I wanted to, if I would do anything basketball, it would be this. Yeah. And, you know, as far as athleticism, I'm not saying I won't be, an, I won't, you know, portray another athlete or you won't see my athleticism show up in other roles like that because I can do so many different things athletically. But as far as basketball, I probably want to just leave this one right here. <laughs> yeah. 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 That makes a lot of sense. I mean, just saying like, so he plays on the Knicks, right. And you're bringing up Marbury and that makes me think even more. So you're talking about like the Sweetwater tree. It's like, did he kind of, create like the fact that new york is the mecca of basketball like i, I like honestly like him being on the well, knicks like massive well, impact I mean, for sure a, right it, definitely a huge impact i mean people don't know this but when they formed the nba that was where the first basketball ever was score uh, was on for the knicks so the knick player was the first person to ever score an nba bucket so the new york just has a spiritual essence of like importance to the game of basketball and sweetwater's story being that it happened in New York and it's right. a New York Nick story, definitely is universal and definitely right. magnified the intensity of that moment for sure. It's the only place I know that you can you can't walk a mile in within the city or half a mile within the city without seeing somebody dribbling, holding, having a basketball, playing basketball. It's literally everywhere. I was just there. I was it's everywhere you turn. It, it, it's unbelievable. Uh, all right, I'm curious. We ask everybody this. No pressure. You might have a good one. It could be from you playing, watching, in this film, out of this film, whatever. What is your favorite sports memory of all time? Whoa. <laughs> I don't know. I, okay, I just thought about a moment. I, I got to just stay present, so it may be another moment better later when I think about this. Sure. But right now, I'm thinking about when I was, maybe was that eight years old, maybe? I think I was eight. And I was playing at a, at, a, at, a, at a rec league in L.A. It's called Rancho, Rancho Park. And it was like three seconds left on the clock. And I caught the ball. And I think only my mom was at the game at that time. And it was like three seconds left on the clock. It was like three, two. And it's just this feeling of a young kid, just confidence. Like, I know I'm making. Like, I know so much that I'm not even thinking about I know. It's like you sitting on the chair. You know the chair holds you up. Like, you just not even thinking about it. I was like, I, it was that type of no. And I dribble past the half court line and I shoot it like with the best follow through I could give. And I just. And when I scored it, the buzzer 
went off. Everybody went crazy. They cut the lights off. And it just went dark. And then it was like fear that happened in me. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? And me and my mom, we just rushed out. But <laughs> the opposing team was mad that I hit the game winner. And the, I guess the opposing team, <laughs> their parents own the gym. So once I scored, it was like they had to shut the game down because they couldn't even live in that moment. I think for me, I just that's like a big memory for me for some reason. Like, wow, you know. You know, it actually kind of connects to the Sweetwater story. To think of someone really having a big moment and you try to, like, ignore it, you know? But, you know, you can't ignore truth for too long. Cream always writes at the top. You know, you can't etch. You can't erase history. Uh, so that kind of just reminded me about that and, and on the spot, man. But, yeah, that, I would say that's the memory I had, man. It was fun. It was all love. And, yeah, so, I'll never forget that. So they basically... Like it was almost like they were playing a video game, the other team, and they were like, Oh, we're about to lose. I'm gonna quit at the very the end. Of it. Rage or, quit. Yeah. yeah, the older you're up 27 nothing and mad in the their third quarter, your yeah, throws the controller, goes home. It, exactly. It's poor, it's poor losing, man. But I mean, it was all fun though. I mean, that's just the choice they decided to do. It was a great competitive game. I mean, it went down to the wire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you'll all and you'll always remember it because they turn the lights out. I mean, that's a very oh, cinematic. Yeah. Very cinematic. Yeah. Uh Everett, we couldn't be rooting for you harder. I'll uh, stoked to see the movie. Congratulations on all the success and everything to come. Appreciate you joining the show, man. Fellas, it's been a blast, man. Shout out to Believe, man. It's been a blast. Always, brother. Be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take Catch care, you later. Man.